How's it going guys? Andy here back in the potting shed and I've got a bit of a strange video for you today. It's an accidental spring hyacinth video. I'll tell you for why, I'm not very organized. I've got to admit it, I'm not the most organized person. I could be better organized. And here's a really good tip for you. If you've got spring bulbs, summer bulbs, daffodils, spring flowering hyacinths, label your stuff, <laughs> label your pots. I've even got somewhere, if I could find it, yeah. I've even got labels. These are specific labels. And somewhere else I've even got a label pen that is specifically so it doesn't wash off. So you can write, there it is. No excuse at all, Andy. All right, here we are. Labels. Label writing pen. So the writes on here doesn't wash off or anything else like that. Very clever, Andy. So you can put it in a pot to remind you what it is come next year, because if it's just a pot with some old sticks coming out of it, how do you know what it is? You don't. Is there a label in there? No, there isn't. Why? Because you're disorganized, Andy. <laughs> so this is my problem. So I'm having a bit of a sort out in here. I've been some tidying things away and what have you. I got this, um, I didn't even know it was there. This tray from under the uh, bench here, I pulled it out and I've got some stuff in here and you can very quickly spot something, can't you? You can spot a little bowl here and it's already got a flower coming out of it. And let me tell you, it smells divine. <laughs> so I feel like a bad dad at the moment. There's a whole bunch of bulbs I've just taken out of the um, pot. And here's another tip. If you're gonna store bulbs for next year, then you need to take them out of the um, potting compost ideally so they, they don't grow any mold or anything. They can dry out nicely and then they're ready to go the next year, if you remember. <laughs> or in my case, you just leave them under the bench and forget all about it. But as you can see, they don't need an excuse to get going. All that energy is stored inside that bulb and they're ready to go. So um, yes, it's a stubby little critter. He's ready to grow. So this has given me a good reminder and maybe an opportunity to remind you guys or give you a tip if you're going to be growing spring flowering bulbs and you want to keep them to next year, you can, but get yourself a label, stick it in, and even create a gardening diary is a good idea. So you can look and put that in ahead for maybe uh, end of February, beginning of March the next year to say, Get your, get your spring flowering bulbs out and plant them up and enjoy them rather than forgetting them and leaving under them under the bench because they're not doing anyone any good. So there we are. A slightly embarrassing video, but I thought it might help someone. So I thought I would let you know that's what I'm doing in the shed today, discovering bulbs that I should have known were there in the first place. So I guess we should probably plant them in something, shouldn't we? Um, yeah, I've probably got some pots that I can put them in, maybe some terracotta ones with some spaggers. How about that? A bit of sphagnum moss. That always looks nice. Hey, here we go. It almost looks like I've prepared this, doesn't it? I haven't. How about a nice pot like that? That would look nice with some spring flowering bulbs in it, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Why not, as we're here, <laughs> let's do a, a potting up video of some accidental spring, spring flowering hyacinths, shall we? Why not? Occasionally, occasionally, I'll allow myself to make some ridiculous um, videos where I haven't given an inch of thought to. Why not? I haven't got my second, I haven't got my second camera set up here either. I guess I could, it's in my pocket. We'll figure it out. Come on, let's go. I'll sort it out in the edit. <laughs> So by the time I turn around, there will be another camera set up with the magic of editing. Ready? Let's go. Not yet. Not yet. 
No. Good that, innit? <laughs> okay then, let's get this sorted. So, I've got my tray of accidental spring bulbs here, ready to go. And in this tray, I've got some compost that I've obviously left here that I've taken out of something else. And if I've left it here, it means it's too good to throw away and it can be used again. And especially if we're using it for some uh, spring bulbs or something like that, the energy is already in the bulb here still that it's gained from last year. So it doesn't need to um, be too much of a rich um, uh, medium that's going to be in here. So we're going to just lob this in here. It's going to be fine. And if you want to pep it up a little bit, you could use some slow release fertilizer granules, something like that. And I can see them in here actually. So this has already got some slow release fertilizer in it because I can see the little green granules in here. So that will be fine. Plenty of perlite, which is good. It means it's not going to be too heavy because this is a big heavy terracotta pot which I probably should have cleaned before I started this not to worry looks rustic doesn't it <laughs> oh, I'm just making it up as I go along right yes I probably wouldn't have worn a slightly cleaner jacket if I was going to be repotting but never mind it's all good Let's get my spaggers now. That's the next question. What have I done with the spaggers? It'll be in here somewhere. Everything's in here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Right, so I've mentioned this before. It's handy to have bits hanging around because you never know when you're gonna to wanna to make an impromptu uh, repotting uh, project and so having bags of sphagnum moss or bags of uh, pre-washed grit or sand or uh, various different types of potting mix is handy because you never know what you're going to need and it's much easier to be able to grab something than it is to have to go out and drive to the store to get something um, so anyway that's why I like to have stuff hanging around so we've got some sphagnum moss here it's been kicking around for a while, but I'm sure it'll be all right. I'm just filling up the rest of the container with this stuff. It's really good. It holds the moisture really well, which is nice. And I'm just going to lob this in here. And so we'll get our accidental spring bulbs, clean them up a little bit. Just going to nestle them in here nicely so we can get the roots into the soil down below and then the bulbs can just protrude a little bit out of the soil they don't want to be totally buried okay see there's still a lot of old leaves on these ones from last year because the idea is that you leave the leaves on to die back and then the energy goes back into the bulbs for next year the idea. I'll show you this year, if I think about it, how you can store bulbs over winter. Plenty of roots on this one. So they're just tidying them up a little bit, cutting off some of the browner stuff. Obviously don't cut the roots off, that would be bad. But just some of these old brownie bits. There we go. Plenty of roots. I'm going to have to take the spaggers off, I think. Get it in the soil a bit more. In you go. Bury them in the potting compost. You know what, I'm going to put a little bit more in. It's easier to put the soil on top than it is to try and bury roots. There we go. Happy days, they'll find their own way once they get going. We can put the spaggers back around. Beauty. I 
Right, let's have a look at some of these others. It's a nice big strong growth coming out of this one. Cut back the old leaves. They haven't, um, they haven't grown any uh, mold or anything since last year, which is a good sign, which means I must have done something right. Which is why I take them out of the, the compost after they've totally died back, is just to keep the air around them. That is handy in this sort of a tray like this, because the air stays around them, hopefully stops them from getting damp and damping off, which will kill them. Or getting any mold on them so that seems to have been successful a little bit of fresh potting compost just to go over the roots makes my life a little bit easier cover it up with a bit more spaggers can't beat a bit of spaggers Right, obviously it's curling over a little bit at the moment, but they'll straighten out once they start getting the light and the warmth. They start growing properly. I love that little one. It smells beautiful, it smells of springtime. Ah, oh, love it. Love the smell of a hyacinth. If you've never grown hyacinths in your house, go out to your local garden center buy some bulbs, or you can even get them in decorative baskets with a bit of spaggers in there already. Whichever way you do it, put it on your living, in your table, in your living space, and smell that sweet spring flower smell. Divine. It makes you feel good to be alive when you smell that scent. It really is beautiful. Then come and tell me what you thought. Now this is weird. <laughs> Oh, there are lots of smaller ones. Ah, oh, these are something different, I think. Now, this one has gone a little bit mouldy. Must have been a bit of moisture still in it. These are smaller ones. These are something... I don't think these are hyacinths. I might find a different pot for these, see how they go. I don't know what they are because I didn't label them. Only guessing it will be a... it will be a surprise. Right, let's put this one in here. There's a lot more root than I expected on these guys. There we are. Now the shoots will find their own way, so these ones are poking out the side a little bit, but as long as you put the roots in the soil and then the actual bulbs just on the surface around in between the spaggers, the shoots will find their own way because once they you bring them into your living space and you keep the moisture around them and the, the heat is up, their clock will switch on and they'll start shooting away. And that's why they've started shooting already, because temperatures have warmed up a little bit in the last week or so. And they're pretty smart, these guys. They know what's going on. And so they start doing their thing. They want to do their thing. Oh, I can't get enough of that scent. It's beautiful. Right. Is that enough? I think we should have one small one in the middle as well, and then we'll be done. That will probably do us. <laughs> A little sprinkle around the edges just to get those roots buried and the spaggers can go back on top. That's, that's turned a bit dirty, isn't it? Got a bit some fresh stuff. There we go. Happy days. Can never have enough spaggers. Then 
we have it. So that is all we need to do for now. Um, the spaggers is nice and moist, but I'm going to give it another water just to moisten the soil underneath it for the roots. I'm going to bring it into my back porch where it's considerably warmer and got loads of light. And once these things start cracking on and we get some flowers, I can bring it into my uh, dining room area, keep it on my table and have an Easter period of lovely spring flowers, appreciating the new growing season, appreciating spring in all its finery. It just makes me so happy every year, the new season, the new growth, the, the renewing um, and the expectancy of the year to come is almost better than the actual summer itself because the promise is just so special and spring flowers for me really highlight that and get me really excited especially the the sweet smelling ones and and hyacinths i think over the years have probably got a bit of a an old-fashioned reputation certainly in the uk but when you smell a hyacinth in flu, full bloom and you get that aroma in the house it's just amazing and for me it's always been linked with springtime and everything that uh, that is wrapped up in those good feelings as well and so yeah once again it feeds my soul and makes me very happy to do that so a good reminder for me to get my skates on with the spring flowering bulbs i should have done it sooner probably but yes um i'm not very organized i'm afraid must try harder <laughs> so there we have it as you can see, some of the shoots are a little bit uh, on the wonk at the moment, but that's fine because once they get to the light, they'll straighten up and they'll start growing away nicely. So that will do us for now. Thank you very much for watching this surprise, unexpected uh, repotting video. I hope you found it useful or learned to be more organized, not like me, and label your stuff, not like me. And as usual, I will catch you very soon on another video in the potting shed. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.